Established in 1998, the Independent Games Festival was designed to be the video game version of the Sundance Film Festival. Held in conjunction with the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco, the highlight of the festival is its award ceremony. During it, the IGF hands out eight awards, decided by a jury of industry veterans. This year, in the 18th installment of the awards, the winners will be announced on Wednesday, March 16th. For the remainder of this video, we're going to go through the award categories, showing you some past winners, this year's nominees, and finally, our predictions. The first award is for excellence in visual art. Notable past winners include Castle Crashers, Fez, Limbo, Dear Esther, and Kentucky Route Zero. This year, the nominees are Mini Metro, Panoramical, Nog, Armello, Oxen Free, and Darkest Dungeon. All those games have taken different yet stunning approaches to their art. As Aussies, we have a huge soft spot for Armello and its red wall inspired animals, and we're quite partial to Oxen Free's 80s throwback. However, our tip is Mini Metro. Its sleek, minimalist lines don't make for the flashiest of styles, but when viewed from afar, make for some pretty spectacular rainbow colored grids. It's also impressive how easily the lines and symbols are able to communicate all the game's information by their lonesome. No words necessary. Both beautiful and smart, Mini Metro's art is a winner in our eyes. The second award is for excellence in narrative, given to the game with the best storytelling. Scenario, plot construction, story and dialogue are the four main factors taken into consideration here. The award is only three years old, and in that time it's been handed out to 80 Days and Papers Please. This year's possible winners are The Beginner's Guide, Black Closet, That Dragon Cancer, Her Story, Undertale, and The Magic Circle. We'll probably get crucified for every time we don't select Undertale, but regardless, we're going to pick The Beginner's Guide for this one. Davy Redden's follow up to The Stanley Parable is much more introspective and can really get you in the feels at times. Plus, with his examination of game development, it should hold extra appeal with the judges. The Magic Circle has that same draw card, but probably comes up short when pitted against the Beginner's Guide. However, with its emotional power and poetic tale of faith and love, don't be surprised to see that dragon cancer get up either. Her story would have to be a favourite too. Next up is Excellence in Design, awarded to the indie with the best designed game mechanics and levels and difficulty balancing. In the past, the gong has gone to Braid, Spelunky and Faster Than Light. Presently, the nominees include Mini Metro, Kingdom, Her Story, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, Super Hot, and Infinifactory. Her Story and Keep Talking Nobody Explodes have superbly executed some unique game mechanics, and Infiniminer creator Zachary Bart's Infinifactory is an underrated blast of a puzzler. However, we're picking Super Hot to collect the honors for best design. It has a great core idea with a steady progression of new ideas and difficulty. It also gets design points for deconstructing and redesigning the shooter genre as a turn-based puzzle game. The only real knock is its short playtime, but in the end, we don't think it'll matter too much. Over the years, the Excellence for Audio Award has been won by the likes of Audio Surf and Amnesia The Dark Descent. This year, the competing games are Mini Metro, Panoramical, That Dragon Cancer, Darkest Dungeon, Lumini, and Undertale. We'd strongly consider Crypt of the Necrodancer for this one, but sadly it didn't get a nomination. Anyhow, we reckon Undertale would be an extremely worthy winner. For all the praise it's gotten about its story and humour, Undertale's music almost gets overlooked sometimes. The Super Nintendo inspired soundtrack made by the one and only Toby Fox is straight fire. The Nuovo Award is a bit of a different beast. It recognises abstract, short form and unconventional games, or what you may call art games. Games get nominated based on their originality and how much they advance the medium. Over time, we've seen Nidhogg and Cartlife collect the honour. This time, one of The Beginner's Guide, Panoramical, Fantastic Contraption, Orchards to Dusk, Her Story, Sybil, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, or Progress to 100 will win. Progress to 100 is one of the most creative mobile games around, and Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes brilliantly marries old and new concepts over many devices. Sybil is an interesting mix of documentary and game, but her story makes more effective use of its video clips, so it's going to be our choice for the Nuovo Award. There really hasn't been anything like it before, and it's not just experimental, but a seriously good game too. From Octodad to Risk of Rain, the student games that have won this award have gone on to bigger and better things. 
This year's nominees are Pit 4 Planet, Ape Out, The Glitched, Circa Infinity, Orchards to Dusk, and Chambara. From that crop, our two fades are Orchards to Dusk and Pit 4 Planet. Orchards to Dusk has you wander around a lonely planet and confront your powerlessness. And Pitfall Planet is a cute and clever local co-op adventure. Between these two, we'll take Pitfall Planet. The grand prize is named after the late Seamus McNally. His game Treadmarks won the award back in 2000. However, he passed away from Hodgkin's disease shortly after. In the past, the prize has been won by Aquaria, Monaco and Minecraft. This year, it'll be won by one of Mini Metro, Darkest Dungeon, Her Story, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, Super Hut or Undertale. All these games are fantastic and have a strong case to win. We wouldn't be upset if any of them won. If we have to pick one, we'll go with Darkest Dungeon. Out of the games on the list, it's the one we keep coming back to. Lastly is the Audience Award, which lets the public vote for what they think is the best indie of the year. Any game can win it, regardless if they're nominated for the other categories or not. The voting period for this year is already up, unfortunately. It was sneakily tucked into a week in mid-February. Last year, this War of Mine was deemed the best by the fans. This year, our money is on Undertale. It's so beloved among players, and that should translate into a mountain of votes. If you want to know the results of the IGF Awards, make sure you're following us on Twitter, because we'll be posting them there for you. Also, tell us in the comments below who you think the winners will be. As always, thanks for watching. My name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh. We'll see you next time here on Indie Format.